Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson. I'm contributing editor and project manager with Nixine Publishing here in the United States. And we are doing a series of videos about graphene. I'm gonna introduce you now to our editor in chief of the Nixine Journal, Adrian Nixon, who's gonna explain everything to us. Hi, Hello, Adrian. Debbie. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing really well. I'm enjoying this series. It's an, it's an awful lot of fun to talk with you and learn so much more about graphene. Likewise, I really enjoy this stuff too. So today what we're going to do is, um, looking back, we've talked about the fact that graphene comes from a rock, graphite, which is mined straight from the ground. Yep. And then we have this magnificent material that's single layer, two-dimensional, called graphene, which um, is so incredibly thin and small and two-dimensional. So what I'd like to know today is how do we get graphene as we know it from graphite? What, what do you do to make that happen? Really good question. Um, there are two ways to make graphene. There is the top-down way, which is what you've just been talking about, where we start off with graphite and then we end up with graphene. Okay. And there's another one called the bottom-up route, which is an entirely different way. We don't need graphi uh, graphite at all. So we'll park the bottom-up one for another video and okay. we'll concentrate on top-down because that's pretty close to the question you've asked so far. Okay. So, which is, there's graphite, and that is a bigger version of the stuff in pencils. How do you get from that, which is just an ordinary material that um, doesn't cost very much, um, mm -hmm. How do you get from that to this wonder material, graphene? So first of all, we need to understand what the what that is actually made up of. Now, I've got some uh, coasters here. Uh, these are sort of laser cut from wood. And they just happen to have a hexagon pattern on them. A colleague of mine who you know, Sue White, uh, gave, me, gave me these. I have a stack of them, which is quite useful. Very. So, yes. If you can think about graphite as being a stack of all these things locked together. So they can slide over one another. And actually, when you're drawing a line on a pencil, uh, a pencil trace on a piece of paper, in effect, what you're doing is smearing out these sheets and leaving a trail of graphite um, over the paper. And if you actually take that pencil, and if you draw a pencil line along a piece of paper and then gradually lift it gently, gently off the paper, then somewhere along that very faint line, you will probably have a single atomic layer of graphene uh, stuck on a piece, piece of paper. That tells you two things. One, really easy to make graphene. Two, it's really hard to make it in quantities that are significant. So how do you even know you've got the stuff? Perhaps there's another video as well we can talk about. So how graphene was discovered, first of all, you'll remember Costia and Andre uh, won the Nobel Prize for isolating graphene, and they got some uh, sticky tape. So you get a lump of graphite, you put it on some sticky tape, take another piece of sticky tape, stick it on the top, and then you cleave the deck, throw one away, get another piece of sticky tape, cleave the deck again, and keep on doing that, cleaving again, until finally we end up with that single atomic layer of graphite. That process of cleaving is called exfoliation. And believe it or not, the, uh, you're familiar with the uh, NGI, the National Graphene Institute in Manchester, in the UK. And they have, this is a um, 70, 80 million dollar building uh, with some of the world's best scientists in it and um, some of the world's best pieces of kit. Underground, there are clean rooms where they have groups of scientists dressed up in clean room outfits. And their job is to make graphene uh, the highest quality graphene from very, very big crystalline graphite. And they are literally still doing this to make the highest quality graphite for research purposes. I know, yeah, it's uh, because making graphite in big bits is very difficult. So um, the graphite in uh, the graphene in graphite is made up of really tiny things called nanoplatelets. And these are fractions of fractions of fractions of a millimeter. So they're really tiny, they end up as black powders and liquids. So for research purposes, it's okay to carry on using the sticky tape method. Um, and let, we'll park that because that really isn't commercial material. It costs, each piece of graphene I'm told costs around about 
eighteen hundred dollars to produce something like that because you've got to pay for the time, skilled people to stare down microscopes. And even the sticky tape they use, I'm told that just one roll of sticky tape is about $300. So it's expensive stuff. A little time consuming, right? Very, yes, yes. Yeah. But it's worth putting the time in because that's the only place you can get the large pieces of graphene out. And when I say large, if you can imagine a piece of... Um, a4, no, you don't use A4, do you? Uh, whatever your, is it fool's cap you use in the USA? Um, the size of copier paper, standard paper. Yeah, copier yeah. paper. Um, so if you've got something on cop, printed on copy paper, if you can think of the letter O printed at 12 point on copier paper uh, by a printer, then the center of the O, that's roughly about the largest piece of graphene that's ever been isolated. Oh my gosh, with using the sticky tape? Using the sticky tape method, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that just gives you a, a rough idea about, and that's the largest piece. Um, so for commercial properties, how, that, how on earth do we get the graphene out of that? Well, there are a number of ways of doing it. So the, the first one is what's called electrochemical exfoliation, which sounds a mouthful, but what it means is you basically electrocute the graphite. Mm. And you put it, you put, you grind up this into a powder. Um, actually, you can just stick this in as an electrode into a solution and connect it up to a battery. And in the solution, you have some uh, salts, things like sodium salts. And what happens is the electric current and the salts force the platelets apart, and then they peel them off and it exfoliates them. And if you do it gently and carefully, you actually end up with, and here's one I made earlier in um, my lab, um, this is electrochemically exfoliated graphene nanoplatelets. That's what it looks like, a hmm. black liquid. That is actually graphene in there. So um, how, how much of that can you make at a time? How uh, much can be made at a time? Well, you can make tons at a time if you just scale up your process. So there are people doing this at the minute. Um, not everybody uses this one is using something called um, sodium sulfate. Um, that's what that means. And basically, it's just a salt that um, stops the platelets from coming back together again. Um, people like First Graphene, who you'll be familiar with, they tend to use um, a very dilute um, solution of sodium, uh, sulfuric acid. And oh. that's an electrochemical route to get the part, the, uh, the, uh, the graphene from graphite. And they start off with very, very high quality graphite. So they end up with uh, higher quality graphene in the first place. So that's that one so far. Um, other ways you can do it, if you um, grind up the graphite into a slurry or uh, and suspend it in liquid, it still looks like the graphene I showed you, but it's actually graphite, so it's still lots of these platelets stuck together. But then if you force it through high pressure, through a very small hole, then uh, what happens is you get shear forces, and these shear forces actually strip the plates apart, and you do that a few times and you'll end up with uh, single nanoplates floating around in the liquid and then you can isolate them again. So and Is that the same type of liquid that you were using before? Water, yeah. yeah. So there aren't very many um, uh, toxic compounds that come out of it. So you can make graphene very, very environmentally friendly way. Um, you can also um, expose graphite to very strong chemical reagents. So graph graphite and graphene aren't very chemically reactive, they're very stable compounds. Um, so you have to have basically uh, the chemical equivalent of a mugging to get the uh, graphite out of that. And what that means is that um, you expose that to really concentrated acids and oxidizing agents. And this is something called Hummer's method, and very concentrated sulfuric acid um, potassium permanganate, very aggressive uh, conditions. And what that does, that again tears the plates apart, but it oxidizes them. So you end up with something called graphene oxide. And maybe, again, another video we can talk about what, what is graphene oxide. You then, graphene has been oxidized, so you reverse the reaction by reducing it back again, and you end up with something called reduced graphene oxide. And here's some reduced graphene oxide. That's, yeah, and that's. And that's a powder, right? That, sorry, Debbie, I missed that. That was... That's a powder, right? Exactly, yes, a black powder. Yep. So that, um, that again, can be made in commercial quantities, in tons quantities. This particular one was, uh, came from Sri Lanka. Um, 
So there's lots of different ways that you can tear the graphite, the graphite apart to get graphene. That process is called exfoliation. It takes place um, with a number of reagents. It can just be water, you could use mechanical forces, you could use electricity, you could use salts. And they all end up with um, something similar, which is either a black powder or a slurry in water. So I heard a rumor, and maybe it's true or not, let's check with you because you know. Um, can you make graphene from honey? Oh, yes, yes. Um, really? Yeah. Um, so if you imagine um, you have what's called a three roll mill. So if I just take my coasters again, you can imagine these are made of highly, these are cylinders of very highly polished stainless steel. And they're probably about this wide, that sort of diameter. Yeah, so fairly heavy things. And they're, they keep turning. If you put the graphite in, then what happens is it gets crunched up and comes out the other side. But it comes out the other side as graphite because you can't sort of tear apart the, um, the plates again. You can't do that exfoliation thing. Turns out that if you add a little bit of honey to the process as the graphite is going through the mills, then what the, uh, the graphite, what the honey does, it grabs hold of the platelets of the graphite. And as it goes through the three roll mill, it, honey has the same surface energy as graphene and it sticks onto these plates and allows them, it pulls them apart. If you think about, if these are sort of glued together, um, with a sort of a, a fairly sticky glue. If I just grabbed hold of them with my hands, my hands would slide off. That's what's happening with the three roll mill and the graphite. But if I had honey, it's like I've got washing up gloves on and I can get a better grip and pull it apart. That's what's going on there. So yes, honey is used to make graphene. Um, there are lots of different ways and everybody's been trying to add different things because if they can make one slight tweak to the process, they can invalidate somebody else's patent and make a patent of their own. And you only need tiny changes. And everybody's sort of been jostling for position, trying to get uh, a patented process that they can then go on to um, protect and then sell and make lots of money. And there are lots of companies out there uh, jostling for position doing just that right now. Right. So if you, if you have honey that's separating the, um, the, the graphene from the graphite, then is it sticky? Is it Does it have honey all over it when it's done? Or does the honey just wash away in the water? The honey just washes away in the water. Yeah. Oh, how interesting. It probably sticks to a little bit of it, but um, most of it would wash away. Oh, that That's really fascinating. You know, graphene never ceases to amaze us, does it? Me too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's why we find it fun. Absolutely. Okay, so anything else today about the top down method? Nope, just a quick recap. This top okay. down is we start with graphite, we end up with graphene, either as a black powder or a black slurry uh, liquid, um, usually called a dispersion. And the process from getting to graphite to the graphene powder is called exfoliation, which means taking the nanoplates apart. Wow, well, thank you so much. You've really made it simple for us to understand, and we've learned a lot today, I think. Yep, and I never stopped learning too. Oh, uh, that's me too, lifestyle of learning. Cool. Well, we'll be back again and uh, talk some more about graphene from the bottom up. How's that? Thank you, Debbie. We'll do that. Thanks, Adrian. Appreciate your time. Bye bye.